Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Chris here again with another uh, another quick video. Uh, this one here, uh, I am going to show you all of the blended scotches that I have right now. Uh, some of them you may have already seen in a previous video, but I thought I would kind of uh, show you everything I have in um, in my blended uh, blended scotches. So uh, first one here, uh, I think you may have seen this one already. But this is, and I brought, I brought this one in here from uh, BSW out in Calgary. It was on sale, never seen it before. Uh, it looks super cool. And uh, um, and this is actually quite a hard one to find now. So uh, this one here is the Black Bull, the peated um, version of it here. So really, really cool looking scotch. Uh, sitting here at, at 50 50 percent so um i would say that's pretty much cask strength and uh very 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 cool um looking bottle uh it's too i mean it's black i mean it's the black bull so you can't really see what it looks like until uh, you get it out of the bottle but uh, i've heard nothing but great things about this scotch so really kind of looking forward to that one um so yeah, so that's the first one here. Uh, this one here, I got at a... We had this one for premium spirit release, but I bought this one beforehand, and I got it out at BSW, and they said it was a limited release, and uh, going to be fairly hard to find. So I picked this one up, um, and then we did get it for premium spirit release. Um... But the price that we were asking in Manitoba for it was almost double what I paid for it. So uh, I think I got off, uh, I think I got away pretty, pretty lucky with this one here. So this is the Dewar's 21 year old blended scotch. And I've had Dewar's before and, um, like, like I said in the past, um, I, uh, um, when I got into, into scotch, uh, you know, I, you, you're always looking for like single malt, you know, that's, that's what everybody wants, single malt, you know, and I wasn't educated enough to see other things that would have been equally amazing, if not better, right in front of my face, that was a blended scotch. Case in point, um, some of these, uh, compass boxes that I have. Um, so I would turn my nose up to some of these so-called quote unquote blended scotches and thank freaking God I matured fairly quickly in my scotch, um, um, loving hobby or tasting or whatever to see that these are really, really good. And in some cases better than... Uh, some of the single malts. Uh, I remember doing a wedding last year, and uh, um, I don't. I don't ever drink when I'm at weddings. It's not. I don't think it's appropriate. Um, when I was an Air Canada pilot, we never got to drink in the cockpit, and I don't think uh, we should be drinking at work either. But you know, if you're the bride or the groom or the groom's father or or mother. Um, uh, you know, wants to have a drink with you and, and you, you can't be in, and, and, you know, royal ass and put your nose up at it. No, no, I'm not going to drink with you. Uh, you know, you're not better than anybody there. And you should be very lucky that the fact that they chose you out of the, uh, 900 photographers we have, uh, roaming around in Winnipeg here. So of course I'll have a drink with them, but just one, you know, you're not, you're not being paid to be sitting there drinking, but, um, and there's one particular wedding I was at. It was at the Four Point Sheraton South on Pemina Highway. Amazing, amazing uh, venue to have a wedding. And uh, um, Tom and uh, Deanna, they're very close personal friends of mine. Um, just a wonderful family-owned uh, place. Uh, check them out. Uh, if you're ever in the area or you're in Winnipeg and you're looking for a, you know, a place for a wedding or you're looking to... Uh, you know, just a place to stay, you know, it's right close to the Bomber Stadium too, so, um, I can go for a football game, but, uh, cl yeah, close to everything, 
But anyway, they had a Dewar's white there, just basically white, you know, that's what the bride and groom wanted for her scotch. So I was up there with the dad, the bride's dad, and he says, what do you want? And I said, well, what do you guys got behind the bar there? And uh, like, oh, I said, oh, well, you got scotch there. I haven't tried that one before. And this was just basic Dewar's white, like nothing, nothing expensive, nothing rare or anything like that. I tried it. And I was like, oh, my God, is this ever good. Oh, I couldn't believe how good it was. Um, so, uh, note to self, I've got to go and buy a bottle of, of Dewar's White next time I'm out. Um, not a hard bottle to find, but I think it's be something really cool to have. But I do have these Dewar's ones here. Uh, this one here I got at the Fort Gary, um, or sorry, Fort Richmond uh, liquor store uh, when they brought these ones out. And these ones were brought out in fairly limited release. And uh, the Fort Richmond one is right beside the Four Point Sheridan, where I had my first experience with um, the Dewar's uh, White. So, yeah, this one looks really, really, really nice. So I'm really looking forward to trying this guy. Haven't tried these ones here at all. And the other Dewar's one here, uh, this one sold out. That one, the Caribbean Smooth, sold out probably within 10 days. This one here, the Illegal Smooth with the uh, Mezcal finish, I think sold out within about three days. And they're all age statement uh, whiskey, uh, scotches too. So this one is gonna be really good. I heard nothing but great things about this particular scotch. So uh, yeah, really looking forward to trying this one here with you guys as well. So. Uh, if any of you have tried any of these scotches, let me know, you know, what you thought of them. You know, good, bad, or the ugly. You know, I mean, not every scotch can be good. And uh, and it's just your own opinion, right? I mean, I might think that this is the greatest thing ever. And uh, and uh, would would that would be the only one I would ever want to drink if I was on a desert island. And you'd be going, oh, that's, that's terrible. Why would, you, why would you want to have that? But that's the great thing about somebody's opinion. You know, like, everybody's got an opinion. And... Um, um, and, and you can learn from them, right? Uh, and, and there's certainly way more people out there that know way more about scotch than I will ever, ever know, you know? Um, uh, I've been into, into wine and wine collecting since I was probably about 18 years old. So I've got a fairly decent cellar put together and, um, and, and I've been working on, uh, putting together a pretty good cellar of, uh, of scotch and whiskeys and rums and, various other spirits. So I've got a, I've got a pretty good seller here. And you guys are going to see absolutely everything that I've got anyway. And we're going to try everything together too. So, um, that's going to be the fun part. Uh, the next one here that I got, this one, this one is fairly easy to get in Winnipeg, but then it can be very hard to get in Winnipeg. They'll bring it in and it'll be there for say two or three months and then it's gone. And you won't see it for two or three months, and then they'll bring it in again, and then it's go and then it's there for a month or two, and then it's gone for like four months. So, um, uh, and I've tried this one before actually. I've had a sample of it at the uh, liquor store, and uh, it was amazing. It hits definitely far beyond its price point, and this one is Monkey Shoulder. I was blown away about how good this one. This is batch 27. Uh, really, really, really good scotch. Like, like wow. I didn't think much of it. I thought, oh, monkey shoulder. That sounds like kind of a, you know, gimmicky kind of name. Oh, my God. Is this ever good? If you ever get a chance to try this, this is great. When I bought this one, um, I think it was like 40 43 dollars now it's up over 56 i think here at the liquor store i have to look again but it has gone up and every time it comes back it seems just to go up but it is a, a really nice blended scotch um and hits way above its price point and it's kind of got a little cool little dirty ass little monkey sitting there i don't know what the hell they're doing probably contemplating stealing your booze um yeah I lived in California after university. I, I uh, went to university uh, to become a biologist, and uh, 
my summer jobs were working at Ducks Unlimited in Stonewall as a summer student biologist and that was one of the best jobs I ever had and it was just so much fun and uh, but um, there were no jobs for biologists at the time and I really wanted to go over to Australia and I wanted to be a marine biologist and um, and it just the, the thought of always contracting yourself out to um, the next job and you're kind of all over the place at the time I'm not sure what it's like now but back then that's what it was like and ever since I was a little kid I was like three years old I was gonna be a biologist big big animal lover wouldn't hurt anything um, just uh, you know I was I was when we go fishing as kids you know and I've been a huge fisherman ever since I've gone fishing all over the place with, you know my with my best friend my father um, and uh, so dad and I'd be fishing all over the place you know with, with my other two brothers uh, you know Todd and Kurt my sister Terry and my mom it was Doreen we, we'd be um, all over the place you know and that's what we did in the summertime you know we would go fishing and camping and it was just so much fun um, but I would keep notes of uh, you know the size and the length and the weight and everything and then you could figure out the age and what you caught it on and and, and, and where you caught it and uh, so I've always been like that, you know, and then I was out taking pictures of everything. When I was a bush pilot, I was up north running around taking pictures of polar bears and wolves and arctic foxes and narwhal and muskox and caribou and you name it. So, and I really wanted to get into marine biology to study sharks and to protect sharks because uh, um, without sharks, we don't have much of a world. And, uh, but there was no jobs. So I thought, well... Uh, my dad was an airline pilot and I went and did a familiarization flight and I really enjoyed that. And I thought, well, you know, I could be a pilot or I can be a biologist. Um, but I could, uh, you know, I, I could be in the air and I could actually see in real time what was going on down there. Uh, because at the time we were looking at, um, uh, aerial maps, you know, from the past, uh, what was going on, you know, it could be a week old, a couple days old, but you wouldn't see exactly what's going on right now. Uh, now, now we've got drones and satellites. It's crazy. But, um, I saw that would be kind of fun. So anyway, I moved out to Vancouver Island and I was out there and hanging around out there and had a great time, met some really awesome people. Uh, I got a really close friend of mine too, the Aimster, Amy DePauly. Um, she owns a liquor store in Victoria. So I'll put a link to her, um, store, uh, below and go check out the Aimster and tell her, uh, tell her her fear friend, uh, Chris sent you. Um, she'll know what the fear friends are. Um, we, uh, yeah, we, we, we had a lot of, a lot of drinks, um, one night and, uh, I guess she screwed up beer, my beer friend to a fear friend. And then that's kind of stuck, but Amy's amazing. I, I just absolutely love the Aimster. But anyway, um, so after that, I was living in Vancouver Island and, uh, I went down to California and I was living down in San Diego and I was down there surfing and hanging out and I was bartending and whatever. But I met this, some, you know, some really cool guys. And, and, uh, uh, one of those guys came back on a, sh from a ship, um, uh, on an aircraft carrier. And he was saying that one of the, on the, one of their port calls, one of these guys had brought a monkey on board and they thought, oh, this is cool little, little monkey. It'd be kind of neat to have around. And he'd be a little mascot, uh, mascot on the ship. Well, that dirty ass little thing got into everything, crapped on stuff, ate stuff, did all kinds of um, indecent things to itself and put it all over their clothes and everything else in their food. It was like this dirty ass, little skunky ass monkey. So what they, <laughs> they did is they have a catapult on these ships that launch aircraft into the air, like these, you know, several ton aircraft into the air to get them off this small deck. Well, he put this dirty ass little thing on the uh, catapult and launched the little bastard into the, into the um, Pacific Ocean somewhere. So yeah, that's, um, that might be one of these little guys here. So as cute as monkeys are, there's no way I would ever want one as a, as a pet. Not a, not a chance. Um, so kind of a long about story, but I don't know, as whenever I think of the, the monkeys and stuff, I think of that. And I think of, um, this one guy used to fly around back in the day. I don't know. Most Canadians would probably know it. I'm not sure about the Americans or the people across the overseas, but there's a TV show called the trailer park boys. And, uh, 
<laughs> it's one of the best shows. But I used to fly these guys around. So I'd either fly Ricky Julian or Bubbles or Randy Early around all the time. And um, um, uh, Mike, who plays Bubbles, uh, one of his girlfriends was my flight attendant. So, but Mike would always come up up front, you know, you know, sometimes before or after the flight, because he's a big aviation fan. But, um, but anyway, there was one, one part in the TV show, uh, in, in the show itself and Bubbles, he wears these Coke bottle glasses and, but he, he wants to be a a truck driver in the biggest way. And they're going to be running drugs and doing some kind of drug run or whatever. Uh, they're always up to some kind of crazy scheme on that show. But anyway, um, he's like, uh. Um, you know, they're just saying, oh yeah, you're going to get your rig license bubbles and you be our driver and stuff. And he's all excited. And he's like, stop teasing me, boys. I'm going to get my rig license. I'm going to be just like that fucking BJ and the Bearcock sucker. Except I'm going to have kitties in my truck instead of a dirty ass stinky little monkey. Is a Johnny Walker. And this one here is the Song of Fire um, from the Game of Thrones. Never really got into the Game of Thrones show. Um, lots kind of going on. Uh, with it and you got to really kind of pay attention to it and uh as a wedding photographer and corporate photographer and product uh, guy i'm traveling all over the place you don't you know i couldn't really invest my time into into really watching it maybe maybe someday in reruns and when i retire in a million years from now i'll probably watch it because i'm growing up as a kid i was a big dungeons and dragon fan and always playing dungeons and dragons when i was a kid so uh, and this something like this seems to be really right up my alley, so I'm sure I really enjoy it. But uh, uh, they have two different types. Uh, I didn't get the white wool or the white white wolf. I think it is. Anyway, that's kind of more a fruitier one. I thought, well, I'll try this one here to start with. And uh, it's actually on sale right now. They're actually getting rid of it out of the out of the liquor store here in Winnipeg. But um, and it's on for a really good deal. So I might have to pick up the uh, the other one. But I uh, tried this one. This was really good. Um, I found it a little light for my taste uh, for for the peat smoke, but um, but it was still really good. It was it was interesting. Uh, and this is here is the Johnny Walker Black, and this is the special edition version of the uh, of the bottle uh, that they put out a couple of years ago, I guess. And um, and they're actually getting rid of this one as well. Um, and I guess they like the, uh, the original version better, but this is, I don't know, this is kind of cool, but for the price they're asking for it, I mean, it's still the same 12 year old scotch, blended scotch inside there. I thought, well, I'll just save myself, I don't know, 15, $18 and, and get this one instead. But, uh, but I have had it and I've got a little sampling pack of it, uh, that I, uh, may or may not be up by now. Um, probably is. I'm not sure how I'm going to be uh, posting these uh, videos, but anyway, I've got a taster pack of, of a bunch of different Johnny Walkers and the black was in there as well as double black, but this one's really nice. I, I really do like the Johnny Walker black. Um, and, uh, this one here, uh, this came, came out, I believe last year and it is, uh, a blended scotch called waterproof. Um, this one is good. I, I, they, they were doing samples at the liquor store when they first, first came in. Uh, so I ended up picking up a bottle of it. It's really nice. And you can see it's 45.8%. So, um, kind of, uh, you know, hits our, on the, on the heavier side of, uh, of, uh, scotch, you know, so it's a nice, uh, it's a nice scotch, super flavorful. And I, and the, uh, the label itself here, it kind of looks like it's got, uh, water on it. It's kind of texturized. I don't know if you can see that in the, uh, the video itself oh yeah a little bit eh but uh yeah really really nice scotch they just they did have these on sale or it is on sale right now at the liquor store i'm not 100 percent sure to the end of the month anyway um but if you if you have tried this one um definitely give that one a shot uh yeah really 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 nice scotch um this guy here um i found this next bottle here in the same spot, I found um, this bottle, the Oak Cross from uh, Compass Box. Um, I just did a, a, a video of all the Compass Box that I have, but in case you haven't seen it, I'll, uh, I'll, maybe I'll do all the Compass Box here now and then show you the, the last one at the end. But beautiful, these are amazing. And this Oak Cross is really hard to find. 
and because I only have it because I have got the most unbelievably amazing perfect wife perfect wife on the planet um, I uh, I could have got it in Edmonton when I was out there on a shoot with this this, this uh, corporate uh, photo shoot that I was out on and I brought my family with me and uh, yeah we went up to Edmonton um, you know when I was all done and uh, um, uh, saw it there but I saw other bottles that I might have been more interested in so I picked those ones up instead um, which I will show you at, at another date and uh, didn't think anything of that I thought well it'd be an easy one to find nope a very hard one to find actually uh, has been discontinued for a number of years and uh, this that is a very hard bottle to get and uh, she said well we're back in Calgary and we're gonna leave the next day she's like well you know we can drive back the two and a half hours back up to Edmonton to pick it up for you and I'm like I'm not driving two and a half hours for another bottle and then we had the one there so there's a good chance it's probably gone anyway and like a moron I didn't pick it up but I didn't realize how hard it was to find and then we stopped through Regina on the way home, get gas. I'm still like beating myself up that I didn't get this bottle. Um, and, uh, and she's like, oh, there's the Sobeys liquor store right next door to us. Maybe, uh, why don't you go in there and see what they got? And I'm like, and she goes, I got a feeling they might have it. And I was like, there's no way they would have it. It's a Sobeys liquor store. I mean, Sobeys is groceries. There's no way they'd have anything good in there. Boy, was I wrong. Holy man, it's a beautiful liquor store there. So if you're ever in Regina, check out the Sobeys Liquor Store. And they had that. So my son and I went in. He found a couple bottles. I found a couple bottles. He goes, Dad, is that the one you're talking about? I just about fell over. And uh, so good eye on you, Ray. And uh, and Kathy, I love you. You're amazing. Um, you, uh, time and time again, you save the day. And uh, uh, so I... Uh, I chose right when I found you. Um, and this is a peat monster here. This is another, another bottle that I got here in Winnipeg. And this is the pre, uh, post 2019. So this has got three different scotches in it. And, um, we were in the same liquor store, um, as when I found the Oak Cross. And I thought, well, I know there's a, uh, peat monster that, um, is pre-2019 that has five different scotches in it and i thought eh, i already got that one it's not the right one it's, that one's gone you'll never find it uh, and so i took a bunch of you know pictures of inside the liquor store just kind of just as a see what else might be there when i get home anyway i'm home and i look and they had this one there the uh the 2000 the, the pre-2019 one and i was like crap i didn't get it so anyway, I'm talking to a friend of mine who was over one day, and he's like, oh, I go through Regina all the time. I'll pick it up for you. So thanks, Court. Uh, a good buddy of mine went through and grabbed me a bottle. So this one's got five different scotches in it, and um, so I'm very happy to have that. I have had this one before. I haven't tried this one, so I'm looking forward to trying them both and seeing um, the difference between them. Uh, this one here... I uh, picked up at Cal in Calgary at BSW when I was there with my wife and son when I was out uh, doing some shooting. So um, this is the Spice Tree from Compass Box. And I have had this one before, so I know how good this one is. And uh, the next one I picked up in the same liquor store as I got the this Pete Monster, the post-2019. This is the story of the Spaniard. Uh, and I've tried this one. This one's really, really nice. So, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to, uh, to reliving, reliving that, uh, taste, uh, memories again, uh, with you. And, uh, and we'll go through that one as well. And this one I just, just brought in from, uh, from BSW. And this is the Orchard House. And this one's really nice. Uh, I have tried this one in the past as well, so uh, very, very nice scotch. But anyway, this is uh, this last one here that I've got. I believe this is my last um, blended scotch that I have in my cellar. Um, I got this at the same time as I got uh, the, um, the Oak Cross, 
and uh, and a couple other bottles that I was there at the uh, um, Sobeys liquor store in in uh, Regina, and this one is the Shackleton. So I've heard I've had this before in the past, I think, or or one very similar to it. Um, I know there's a uh, I think there's different versions of this one, um, depending on on what uh, um, what uh, casks they come out of. But uh, anyway, this one was a really nice one. So when I saw it, I uh, I definitely needed another one because I never had a bottle of it. I was just at a friend's house that uh, that had it, and uh, it was really really nice. So I picked up a bottle of it because we can't find this in Winnipeg, um, and this is what the bottle looks like here. So uh, very 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 happy with this one. So yeah, looking forward to trying that one uh, with everyone as well. So um, these are from what I could tell, all of my um, uh, blended scotches. Not blended whiskeys, but blended scotches. So, uh, looking forward to, like I said, trying each and every one of these guys here with you. And, um, and if you've had any of these, uh, maybe leave a comment in uh, down below and let me know what you thought of them. And uh, um, and maybe if we uh, if we can get enough people out there that have had had these before, um, maybe we can do like an online tasting or something like that. That might be that might be kind of fun. Um, yeah, I think that I think that would be really kind of a kind of a cool thing to do. So yeah, um, so yeah, there's the peated black bull, the Dewar's twenty one year old limited release small batch the uh, Dewar's Caribbean smooth uh, eight-year-old uh, limited release as well as the Dewar's illegal mezcal eight-year-old limited release uh, monkey shoulder and this is batch 27 um, I'm gonna have to go to the liquor store and see what batch they're on right now maybe pick up another one of these because these are really really good um, this is the um, uh, Song of Fire by Johnny Walker and the Game of Thrones. Uh, they have these on sale right now, so I might have to go and maybe I'll go and pick up the uh, the white one as well. I think that's the one with the, the dire wolf on it. I'm, I'm not sure of the exact name of it. Uh, this is the Johnny Walker Black with a limited release uh, bottle of it. Um, it's on sale right now as well at the, the LC. Um, this is the waterproof really 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 nice scotch and again my compass box the uh, story of the spaniard the spice tree the uh, orchard house and then there's the shackleton and then another uh, compass box the peat monster this is the uh, pre-2019 there's the post-2019 and thanks to my wife and son I have the Oak Cross. So, anyway, um, I believe that's all of the uh, um, uh, blended scotches that I have in my cellar. But uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. This has been going on for about tw almost 20, well, 29 minutes coming up here. So, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, we're going to go through each and every one of these guys here when we do actually sit down and taste them. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for watching and please like and subscribe. There's going to be a lot more content to come and lots of giveaways still and, uh, and take care. Thanks again. Bye-bye.